Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today I am all sorts of bundled up. We are in Penguin behind the scenes. We are in the hallway. Those of you who saw the teaser post yesterday, you already know what is so important about today. It is the day before, technically, Elmer's first hatch day or birthday, as we would call it. But today we have so much to celebrate. But good morning, Alexis, Pete, William, Jamie, Abby. Thank you all so much for tuning in live. We have a big birthday celebration to celebrate. And Ella, it is so great to see you again tuning in for Z Learning. But I do want to give a quick shout out. I, I, I got a letter in the mail today that I just opened up. I wanted to give a shout out to Gracie. I know this is all backwards for all of you, but it says... I love the two-toed sloth. I'm so glad to hear that, Gracie. It was mailed all the way from North Carolina. Look at that amazing drawing. Gracie, you did a fantastic job. Thanks for sending that love. The two-toed sloth's one of my favorites, but don't tell that to Elmer, because today it is going to be all about penguins. It is a chilly 40-some degrees back here. But of course, I am not by myself. I am joined by our primary penguin keeper, Sam, who we have met before, of course, during Z Learning. So good morning once again, everybody who's tuning in. Sarah Grace, Ryan, Rachel, all these familiar faces. Y'all didn't want to miss the birthday celebration, but I have to say good morning, of course, to Sam, who's been sitting right next to me over here. And we are going to be welcoming the penguins back here in a second. In fact, we're sitting right in front of the main door out onto the habitat. So without further ado, Sam, let's do it. Let's turn around this camera and see if there's any penguins right on the other side. Typically, there is. We'll open it nice and slow. Look at it. <laughs> oh my goodness, and they got so much to say right off the bat. Sam, holy smokes. <laughs> we got all three species back here already. <laughs> All right, so everybody who is just tuning in, now you know exactly where we are this morning. We are here at Penguin Coast, behind the scenes. We have all three of our king penguins right here in front of Sam and myself. We have some rock hoppers. I don't see Elmer yet though. Not yet, we're gonna keep our eyes peeled. When we see our birthday penguin, we will let you all know, but we got quite a few rock hoppers coming in. And of course, our king penguins sitting right here because Sam, of course, brought some fish, but Sam was just pointing out, I think Elmer's right around the corner. But in honor of the green penguins here, let me kind of scooch back a little bit. We might be able to see better. Okay, go ahead, Sam. You're more than welcome to start feeding them. Look at that big gulp. Hopefully you all can see that. It is amazing. This is their herring. Our king penguins each get about two every single day. I was gonna say, and of course they get to decide when they eat how much they want to eat, and Atticus is just not, not in the mood right now for a bite to eat. But Grace and Scout, on the other hand, look like they might be. But I did just see a question come in. I think it was from Alexis, Pete, and William. Sam, how many penguins do we have here at Riverbanks? We have 32 penguins at Riverbanks, so it's a lot to keep track of. Wow. Okay, so 32 <laughs> penguins between the king penguins right here, the rock hoppers, and then our Gentoo, I was going to say, just ran out. <laughs> right on cue, just decided to dip on out. But Sam, can you kind of show us, I think yes. I see Elmer. Yes, our birthday boy, he's coming in. He oh, doesn't he have those yellow tufts right now. <laughs> here, let me see if I can kind of point out this character right here. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's Elmer hanging out right there, y'all. Well, happy hatch day, Elmer. Tomorrow is your first birthday. We're gonna use those both interchangeably. Of course, yeah. penguins aren't born like we are born mammals. They hatch from an egg. In fact, from the picture you saw and the story of Elmer, you already know that was his amazing story. His egg unfortunately somehow got cracked, but our bird keepers repaired it with, believe it or not, Elmer's glue. And I think it's safe to say it worked. <laughs> We're a year later and he is thriving here at Penguins Coast. <laughs> Okay, so we have 32 birds. It looks like, oh, here's a, a Gen 2 penguin coming and joining us. How many rock hopper penguins do we have, Sam? We have quite a few. Yes, we have 24 rock hoppers, so that's a lot of birds. 24 yeah. different rock hoppers. Oh, Hannah, I think I just saw your question. 
You want to know if the penguins like to climb on the rocks. You might have noticed that just a second ago. Sam, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about that? So out of our three species, the king penguins, gentoos, and rock hoppers, the rock hoppers, as you might have guessed, definitely like climbing on those rocks. So if you look around our exhibit on your next visit, there's most likely some that are up on those, that rock work. <laughs> They all have their own unique personalities. And now we've been back here with our penguins before. So those of you who've tuned into Z Learning in the past, you know about our identification bands. You know that we're able to tell all these individuals apart <laughs> by those colorful bands on their wings or their flippers, we might call them. So that way we can tell individuals. That's how Sam is able to know which one's Elmer. By the way, Elmer's still hanging out in that doorway, correct, Sam? Yes, we got you So he's, he's that little individual right there. Hopefully you can see with my finger pointing. <laughs> Jessica, you are absolutely right. It is such an amazing story. Now, Sam's actually going to sneak behind me for a second because Sam made a birthday cake for Elmer, which is so, so sweet. I had no idea that we were going to celebrate this way this morning. What a nice surprise. But I will give you a heads up. The penguins have no idea it is coming around the corner. So they might be a little surprised. They haven't seen a birthday cake in a long time, I say. So they might scamper on out. We'll see if they come back, though. Sam is going nice and slow. But in full penguin form, of course, it is a frozen birthday cake. So let's go ahead and zoom on. And our rock hopper penguins are slowly coming back over. Sam, it looks like you made a multi-tier cake. Oh, he's right in the front row. He's the one on the far left-hand side, y'all. <laughs> All right, Elmer, there's some, oh, some fish, I see. What kind of fish is on there, Sam? We put smelt on there today, so we'll see if anyone wants to venture closer. Delicious. So they got a little bit of smelt with those ice blocks. Now, I'm going to guess they're not going to eat the ice. Is that pretty safe to assume? Yeah, that's correct. Once it melts and they can carry it around, they might do that. But right sure. now, it's pretty heavy. So it's a, not so much of an edible cake as it is a fun cake to play with, maybe? Yeah. Maybe they'll jump on top. Maybe <laughs> once it melts down, they'll pick up those pieces and carry them around wherever they might go. But how cute. Look at how curious they all are. He is right there in front and center. He, oh, now he's kind of turning around. Oh, heading past all the adults. <laughs> Now, like Sam mentioned, if you're looking for Elmer, try to look for that individual who doesn't have those yellow feathers on top of the head. Those are some of the older penguins. Those are more mature plumage that they'll get. But Sam, tell us a little bit more about, <laughs> about what the penguins eat. They had a whole lot to say. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the kings. Are, sorry, what was your question? No, again? you're fine. The, king, the penguins are so noisy, and this is their home. They get to be that noisy, so we'll let them talk when they want to. But what I was curious of, Sam, was what other types of fish do they eat? But before you jump in and answer, Abby, I want to give you a big shout out for donating to Riverbanks in honor of Elmer's birthday. Thanks so much for supporting Riverbanks, and of course, all of our penguins. All right, Sam, now let's talk about what they eat. So I have a couple other fish here. We here, let me go zoom back a little bit. Yeah, Perfect. Capelin, I have more smelt here. We saw the herring that the king penguins eat. I was going to say the big, huge yeah. fish. And then would you say that the ones on the birthday cake are the smallest? That is the smallest that they get. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. So we'll see if anyone wants to venture back. We we'll might have to move the cake. I was going to say the cake might be a little too weird looking for them. They're a little unsure which is totally normal. You have to think about it this way. Penguins are both predators for fish out in the wild, but they're also prey as well, which means that they have to be wary and kind of in tune with all their surroundings all the time. Lisa, thank you so much for donating as well this morning. We've raised $30 to support Riverbanks. Thank you all so, so much. But just like we found out yesterday with our zebras who are another prey species, we take things at their speed, and today it looks like the cake is just a little too weird. I don't think anyone's eaten a fish yet, Sam, have they? Uh, not that I've seen. <laughs> I'm not too terribly surprised. Sam had mentioned before we brought it out, she was a little bit assuming that they were going to be hesitant of the cake. <laughs> now, those of you who are wondering, yes, the cake is made out of ice, but it does have fish on top of it. So... There are some nice snacks as well. 
Christy, thank you so much also for donating to Riverbanks. Y'all are supporting us in honor of Elmer's birthday. Once again, here, let me see if I can get my finger down into the camera view. Aha, there he is. There's Elmer. He's hanging out right here. I am so glad he is joining us on his birthday. A. Coley, though, you are absolutely right. Atticus is not socially distancing at all this morning. Atticus is a very personal penguin. Now, a lot of times people ask, do we touch and hold the penguins? We don't. She's very sweet. But <laughs> other than wanting to be near us, and she kind of has her own personal space bubble, wouldn't she you say, does, Sam? Yeah. Yep. If you would reach out, if I would reach out, she would probably not be comfortable with that. But as you can see, she's leaning against my leg. <laughs> she's good. Now, I will say, though, notice she's leaning by Sam and not by me. She's not necessarily personable to everybody. She definitely have her, has her preferences. But I had to mention that we still do have a penguin that's hanging out back here. But we have a whole lot of our rock hopper individuals <laughs> that are kind of being brave enough, Sam. They're, they're getting closer. <laughs> oh, Sam, I had a great question come in from Alexis, Pete, and William. They would all like to know, do they have a sense of smell? They do have a sense of smell. It's not as developed as ours, but they do use that sense of smell uh, to smell some of that fish source in the water. So they do have a little bit of a sense of smell, not nearly as good as their vision would be. We have a couple of rock hoppers that are joining us right here. A little bit of hand feeding this morning. Whew, so much birthday commotion going on. <laughs> oh, Garrison, age seven, you were wondering how cold is it in the penguin home? Air temperature, is it about 47? Correct. About 47 and water temperatures right around? 40. Right around 40 degrees. So Garrison, it is very cold back here. In fact, Sam and I are bundled up in big sweaters today. Oh, Melissa, good question. What is their defense mechanism? Now, Sam, do you mind sharing us a little bit more about how penguins protect themselves from becoming a snack? So that, if you look at that beak, it is very pointy. They do a very nice job if they want to protect themselves with their beak. Uh, but their wings also are uh, a protect, they use them to protect themselves too. So they do have a really strong slap that they can deliver. Uh, they are very strong swimmers, so they have a lot of muscle. And they... <laughs> Ooh, so much to say. But if you, didn't miss, if you didn't catch what Sam was just explaining, they not only have that beak to use that they can kind of use to protect themselves, maybe from flighted birds of prey that might be trying to nab kiddos, young penguins, or even eggs. They're singing happy birthday to Elvis. They are absolutely singing happy birthday, Sam. I could not agree more. But one of the main defense mechanisms for penguins is to swim away. It's to leave. And it's also to stay camouflaged. Oddly enough, being black and white actually is great camouflage. And Sam, do you mind telling us a little bit more about how that works? Yeah. So the black and white is called counter shading. And every penguin species has that. Uh, the black back will actually blend in with that dark water as they dive down deeper. So maybe a predator up above can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> and then on that flip side, the white belly will reflect sunlight from predators down below looking up. <laughs> what a creative way. That is amazing. Yeah. You just never think of that. But in an ocean environment, counter shading is pretty common. In fact, if you think about other marine life, you might find similar sort of colors. But here, right here, this is Elmer. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the birthday individual. Now, those of you who have been following Riverbanks, you know that last year, I'll wait, hold on. <laughs> last year, we actually had two chicks hat. It was Elmer and Antibodies, and I don't see she's, she's her. Way, she's way oh, I was gonna say, yeah. she's way on the other side of the habitat right now. So if she'd like to join us, she's more than welcome. But she actually just celebrated her first birthday Earlier this month, she was a little bit older than Elmer, but Elmer is this individual right here. You can see he's the one that's missing those yellow feathers. And it looks like Grace is wondering if she can come back, but I don't think she can get past the cake. <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> it's a little too weird for her. <laughs> I'm trying to scroll through, find some more of these great questions. Danica was wondering if all of our penguins have names. They absolutely do, all 32 of them. 
their own names, their own personalities, and we're able to tell them all apart. Well, I'm able to tell them apart from sometimes a quick glance with the colors, but Sam and our other bird keepers work so closely with our penguins, they can tell them apart for their different behaviors and personalities. Once again, right here, that's Elmer. <laughs> I am so glad he's joining us today. You know, 32 penguins. I wasn't sure if he was going to make his way back here. Because you notice that Sam left the door open. We're not making the penguins hang out back with us. They're just so curious. They always want to know what's going on. But, you know, a whole bunch of fish sure doesn't hurt either. <laughs> Let's see if we have any question. Caroline, age nine, was wondering, do they bite? Absolutely, they do. They have very sharp beaks. But thankfully, we give them their personal space. We don't make them uncomfortable. In fact, if anything, we want to make sure that they are at home right here at Riverbanks. Great question, though. Let's see if we can find some more. <laughs> Leslie, you're absolutely right. It really is a jungle in here. Oh, good question. Oh, I scrolled past it. I... Ah, Susie, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Sam. You can answer the question. I know you yeah. can read it, too. <laughs> Uh, so the question was, uh, when will Elmer's yellow feathers develop? And that is going to be soon. So when he goes through his first molt to his adult plumage, I would guess within the next two months he'll be molting. Uh, wow. It's probably hard to see here, but he has really faint yellow feathers. Um, you have to be almost up close to see him. But those tufts should grow in after his first molt. Wow. Oh, you can kind of see them. Okay, Sam, I was, I was having a hard time seeing them myself, but now you can kind of see that little bit of golden yellow coming through. Great question though, Susie, thanks for asking, because that is all a part of penguin maturity. When they first hatch, they're very gray and very fuzzy. They have their down feathers, kind of their baby feathers, let's call them. And then eventually, within just a handful of months, they grow in their adult plumage, which makes them waterproof and ready to hit the water. So there's a whole lot of growing up still to do. It looks like Robin asked the same question about those yellow feathers, but soon enough, Elmer, who is right here, is going to be <laughs> growing up and he's going to be a little harder to tell apart yeah. from the rest of the group. <laughs> and one thing I like about their first small too to the adult plumage, uh, their behavior totally changes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they develop more personality when they have those yellow tufts on their head. Uh, and normally they, yeah, they, they become more comfortable around the, the exhibit. So Elmer's still a little bit nervous. He's learning the ropes, but after his first molt, he becomes a little bit more bold. <laughs> now I did just catch a question. Let me go ahead and lean forward so y'all can get a closer view. Oh, Weston, age eight. I'm so glad you asked because we get to say this all the time. We talk about molting, not mounting, molting. Molting is actually a normal part of bird biology. <laughs> which means that they lose their feathers and regrow in fresh new ones. It's a normal bird thing, but a lot of times most flighted birds, they'll do it one at a time, so it's really hard to notice when they get those fresh feathers. But with penguins, they have a full-on molt and kind of look very strange for a few weeks and eventually grow in all those brand new feathers. Oh, Andrea, you were wondering about the lifespan and in human care versus in the wild. Sam, you wanna go ahead and explain the difference? Sure, so that lifespan is about <laughs> double in human care. Uh, so in the wild, you can expect maybe teens for the rock hoppers, you know, 12, 13. <laughs> they have a lot of things to worry about in the wild. They have predators, they have to find food mm -hmm. and shelter, but here at Riverbanks, they get everything. We give them all the fish they need, all the vet care that they need, and they can live up to their late 20s or early 30s. Wow, I'm so glad you asked that, Andrea. Plus. Riverbanks is a pretty safe place to live. There's no predators to look out for. Because like I said earlier, not only do penguins go hunting for fish, but unfortunately they are part of the food web as well themselves. Perfect. I'm so glad you all are asking all these great questions. Alexis, Pete, and William, great question again. They want to know if they're used to visitors. They absolutely are. Our penguins are very familiar. In fact, before a temporary closure and before all of our social distancing practices, our backstage experience back here with penguins, our penguins love to head back and kind of see some unfamiliar faces, kind of explore around. 
Molly, age 11, though, is wondering about Elmer's mom and dad. Okay, remind me, Sam, am I remembering correctly? Is it Skittles and Gilbert? You're correct. Yeah. Hey, I remembered. Okay, it was a year ago now. But I'm guessing that they're some of those penguins that are hanging out in the habitat. They haven't been making an appearance yet this morning. Yeah, his parents are very busy this year. Um, they are nesting with our other rock hoppers. Uh, so they probably won't make an appearance, but they're very busy taking care of their nest. Absolutely. Well, that's a really good point. If you remember, I mean, Antibodies and Elmer were hatched right around this time. So it is nesting season for our rockhopper penguins, which means they're a little busy right now, which is totally normal. We want to encourage those natural behaviors, of course. Let's go ahead and zoom in on everyone checking out the cake, though. But I'm glad you asked that, Molly. But honestly, penguins, they mature pretty quickly and don't need their parents for very long at all. And they can go off and do their own thing. Hello again from the Ericsons and the Downings all the way from South Dakota. Thanks y'all so much for tuning in for Z Learning. Let's go ahead and see if we can find some more questions. Ooh, I love all these different ones. Now, if we miss your question while we're live as we're trying to enjoy a birthday cake and celebrate, don't worry, I'm gonna jump on the comments later today and make sure that we can answer all those things that y'all might be curious about. <laughs> Sarah, age, age 13, was wondering, why do the penguins keep yelling? The, the penguins are just a very vocal bird. They are colonial, so a lot of them live together, and a lot of them have to vocalize so they know where each other is. So what's probably happening right now is one penguin is on the nest, and another one is returning to the nest, and they're just excited to see their mate. So loud penguins are a normal penguin behavior. Don't worry. That screeching, that calling is all normal. Oh my goodness, you all have so many questions coming in. Why at age five, you crack me up. You wanna know why does it smell so bad? Well, from your perspective, it doesn't smell too terrible this morning, of course. But from Sam and I's perspective, yes, we're getting a pretty fishy smell here. And it is because they eat entirely seafood, of course. So because of that, what goes in does have to come out and it has a bit of a unique aroma. Oh, y'all, thanks so much for all the different shout outs. All these questions have been so much fun to see and answer, but it looks like our penguins are getting a little less interested in our cake. I'm gonna go ahead and turn around our camera though quick and say a big thank you, of course, to Sam and Atticus, and Atticus who's still joining us, of course. Thank you all so much for tuning in live for Elmer's birthday, very frozen birthday cake. We'll go ahead and keep you updated. We'll snap some photos and videos, hopefully to share it later. But it is Friday today, which means we're taking the weekend off and we will rejoin you for Z Learning on Monday morning, everybody. In fact, we already have all of our schedules set next week. And I will tell you, you know, even though it's going to be week 13 and we've been doing it for many, many days, y'all, we got more adventures to come. Monday, we're gonna be starting out in Sea Lion Landing underwater. So start thinking of those great sea lion and seal questions that you wanna send in. And later in the week, we're gonna head over to Gorilla too. So tune in next week for Z Learning. And in the meantime, everybody, have a wonderful weekend. And thank you all so much for tuning in live.